Welcome back to the Tax Advisor and Biz Coach Success Podcast. The purpose of these episodes is to help entrepreneurs become more successful, avoid tax and other business headaches. Remember to tune in frequently as we will be sharing tips, secrets, and expert recommendations in how you can manage your finances, improve wealth, and grow your business. Please like, share, and subscribe. Here's your host, Liz Soria. Hi, everyone, and welcome, welcome back to the Tax Advisor Biz Coach Success Podcast. Well, what can I tell you? Today, I have another incredible uh, guest joining me uh, by, the ma- by the name of Marco Satarelli, and he is an author. He is also an investor, and he is the founder of Naralda Real Estate Investment. And Marco, thank you for taking the time to join us today, and how are you today? I'm great, Liz. How are you? I can't complain. I'm still alive and kicking, so that's a good sign. <laughs> uh, Marco, good. it's great to have you because, first of all, uh, for some of the audience that don't know who you are, uh, uh, I'd like to share that you're a phenomenal podcaster, and um, congratulations because uh, we were talking right before the recording that uh, you have reached almost the top five in iTunes, um, and you have an amazing uh, podcast also by the name of, if I'm not mistaken, um, Investing. Passive real estate investing. Passive. passive, passive real estate investing. Correct. How many episodes do you have already there, Marco? Um, hundred and something. I've been doing it for three years, and I try to do it weekly. <laughs> excellent, excellent. And you also um, interview other experts in in your podcast, correct? Yeah, a wide range of experts, from rich dad advisors to you know just asset protection attorneys. You name it. And the thing, the reason I'm bringing this up because for all of my audience that are uh, in the real estate, uh, you know, industry, it's someone that can go back to your podcast and listen to excellent, you know, uh, information and valuable, you know, tips that you really offer throughout your interviews. So, Marco, tell me a little bit how you got started and what motivates you really to choose real estate as a good passive, you know, income and in the right investment for you. Well, I got started when I was 18 years old. And I don't know if that was just being smart or being lucky, but smart. I just looked. Was it? Okay, well, that's good. I looked around and I noticed that people who had wealth had real estate. And I, you didn't need to be a smart person to notice that. So I decided in my mid-teens that I wanted to be an entrepreneur. And as time went on, I realized that investing in real estate was really the smart thing to do to create wealth. And I, I really couldn't put it in those words at the time. But today I can easily put it into those words because I've, it's been proven you know, time and time and time again. I, I see it all around, not just with our clients. So 18, I bought my first property, renovated it, leased it up, uh, managed it for a number of years, and then I sold it years later and made a nice profit, you know, capital gains profit, but profit nonetheless, uh, which was a lesson learned because I actually made a mistake in selling the property. It would have been smarter for me to keep the property, let the equity grow, and then use that equity to buy more property than to sell it, pay capital gains, and have no cash flow anymore. So lesson learned, and you know, to your listeners, don't sell your property. Keep it, and if you don't want it, you can always do a tax deferred exchange, as you know. Uh, and and right, but I didn't know any of this back then, right? It was just like it was just I, I was just young and stupid. <laughs> so fast forward to two thousand three. Uh, I had I had ventured off into some other businesses, and then I got involved in a dot com business, which failed, uh, unfortunately. And so I took two years off. And um, uh, in 2003, I just got back into real estate investing in the sense that I went to some boot camps. I had paid literally up to thirty five thousand dollars for these expensive boot camps around the country. Wow! And um, I met a lot of other real estate investors, and I started investing heavily in 2004, I actually purchased 84 doors, 84 units in less than 12 months. And investors were coming to me early on saying, hey, Marco, can you help me? Can you coach me? Can you just, you know, help me out? I didn't want to be a coach or anything like that or sell info products. But I said, look, I'll find you the deals and then you can pay me for the deal. Some people call that a wholesale deal, but I wasn't looking to wholesale well, stress fee. property. Don't they call it like a finder's fee? Or a finder's fee. Yeah. So I flipped that model upside down and I turned it into essentially a brokerage model where I'll find the deals, I'll make sure they're turnkey, they're tenant occupied, and um, 
and then I get compensated on the seller side. So I was actually providing a valuable service for the investor and that turned into a business. That's what is today Norada Real Estate Investments and that model more hasn't changed from 14 years ago. So right. that's how I got into real estate. Congratulations, really. And the nice thing about it is like you said, you're an investor yourself and that's really important because uh, you know, one of the things that I have noticed uh, that some, you know, people that talk about real estate, uh, but maybe they just own one property, <laughs> you know, and how much can you really share your knowledge and your experience if you really don't have it yourself? And um, again, it's really interesting that, that you build this business around, uh, you know, a fundamental, and it was because of passion that you have to, I think we have to like real estate. Uh, and I love owning properties. And I, I don't know, to me, it's like, I feel like uh, it's kind of like set you know safety nest you know and and, and like to say um you know diversify right so what do you specialize more in real estate because we've got commercial we've got multifamily, single you know single homes what is it that you feel that um there's a better trend or opportunity of right now as it is the market market well, the, the best opportunity today, this is a short answer to what would be a long question, really, or a long answer, is in the residential space, meaning single families, duplexes, and fourplexes. And the reason I say that is because everybody has been chasing after apartment buildings. And so because there's so much competition for larger multi-unit properties, the, the capitalization rates, those cap rates, have been compressed. We used to see B-class apartments in the 8% plus cap rate range. And today they're like four to 6%. But with residential property, when you're talking about single family homes, duplexes, fourplexes, uh, which is what we focus on primarily, uh, for many, many reasons, we find that the cap rates are still seven, eight, sometimes 9%. Again, it depends on the market and it depends on the neighborhood. But essentially you're looking at seven to 10% cap rates. So when you leverage that, when you put 20 or 25% down and borrow the rest of the, you know, the, the, the acquisition or the purchase price, guess what happens? Your 7, 8% cash on cash return now all of a sudden becomes 10, 12, 14, 15% cash on cash return. So that's why, you know, we love single family homes is because they are fairly consistent in terms of the rates of return that it offers. Now, if a market you're in appreciates too much and the rents don't keep up and that cap rate goes down, what do you do? You look for another market or you look for an, a different neighborhood that supports those rates. So that's why we're in 18 markets today is because we want that diversity in terms of rates of return, appreciation potential, cash flow. Um, anyway, that's a long answer to your short question. No, excellent. I uh, know I, I like that you got into so much detail. Uh, Marco, in one of the things that you said, 18 states, meaning that you don't only, do you uh, invest in California because you're from California uh, or, or you do in other mm -hmm. states, you feel more comfortable instead of doing your backyard, as we call it, you actually expand your, your, your real estate investment into other states that have more possibly potential or, you know, future growth? Yeah, Liz, that's a great question. The thing is, is yes, I live in Southern California, or as I jokingly say, the Socialist Republic of California. Yeah. But um, the reality is, is I don't, I don't touch California with a ten foot pole. I, I, I have invested in California back in 1998, like the early 2000s. But today it doesn't make sense because prices are so expensive and rents are not high enough to keep up with, you know, with the the, the appreciation that we've seen. So. Down, property values are very high. That means down payments are very high. Your downside risk is high because most of the value in the property is in the land. And the land can fluctuate tremendously. We call this a cyclical market. And, and the cyclical markets are usually what give you the bubble markets. So we focus on other markets and it's not exactly 18 states, it's 18 markets. So I would say it's probably 12 states. Because okay. in, in Alabama, as an example, we're in Birmingham and Huntsville and Mont Montgomery. So there's three in one state. Wow. Um, but your, to your point, you can get better rates of return and um, you can get better rates of return and often um, lower risk by diversifying your por portfolio by focusing on markets that we're in, like in the Midwest through down into Texas and on out throughout the Southeast as far as uh, Jacksonville, Florida, I believe is the furthest East we go. So that, that L shape gives you a lot of market choices for Good, uh, good markets with jobs and job growth, strong demand, 
good rental markets, um, good rates of return, and lower downside risk because they're very, what I call linear markets, not cyclical markets. They're pretty stable. So even though they, they fluctuate with economic cycles and real estate cycles, they don't go up and down like a roller coaster, as you see in the coastal markets like California, New York, New Jersey, and these other places. That is so true. And, and so part of your analysis is that you definitely been looking at factors such as, uh, you know, job growth, right? Um, yes. And um, also the fact that, um, what about, New construction. Um, do you, do you feel that's that's uh, a good market to get into uh, when it comes to actually uh, buying property and new constructions? Like maybe you know even if the single family homes. Or do you think there's more potential to really rehab and, and buy properties where they're you know uh, existing? Well, we offer both new construction oh. properties as well as uh, newly renovated properties. The reality is, is that the bulk of what we have to offer and what we sell are newly renovated, like new, completely okay. turnkey properties. And here's the reason why. For the last, since 2008, since we've had the economic bust, if you will, oh. we've had a ton of inventory around the country of distressed properties, properties that were taken back by the banks. Correct. And so because that, that inventory type is widely available, you can get it cheap enough where you can put in enough money to fix it up, make it like new and offer it at a, at a competitive or, f or fair price and get good cash flow and rates of return. That was not possible with new construction. The reason is, is because the cost to build is more, almost always it's more than the cost to buy a distressed property and fix it up. With new construction, depending on the market, you're, you're almost always over $100 a square foot. When you're renovating a property, you could be in the 60 to $80 square foot price range. So it just made more sense. However, there's a shift happening today. We are actually seeing and selling more new construction in different markets today than we were last year and especially over the last four years. Is that so right? That's why I wanted seeing, to bring it up and I'm sorry to interrupt. Yeah, because I, I seen that trend too of the new construction. That's why I wanted to kind of touch base with you on that one. Yeah. And there's also an interesting trend going on industry wide. It's something called build to rent which means that you're building new construction specifically for the purposes of renting it. And so that's what kind of what we've gotten into more and more recently is this whole build to rent model. So. Wow. In what markets do you see they're, they're, they're the hottest trend uh, as of this year, next year, any small predictions that you can say from your expertise that you feel like there's a lot of growth going besides you know, jobs, because also what creates economy is also entrepreneurs like ourselves that we come into those states and we invest in our primary residency, but also other investments that we do. So is your question about appreciation? Like, are you talking about appreciation or are you talking about just market growth? Market growth. What do you think out of your uh, prediction, if you could make one? I know we don't have a crystal ball, but what can you? Uh, what states do you do you see that there's more potential for investors who are listening to this podcast that might be thinking about getting into? It? And again, especially because of the fact that you have a variation of different states that you do invest in properties. Yeah, so I'll give you a general answer. Generally speaking, the southern states will have more growth potential than the northern states. The general trend is people move from the north to the south. And this is especially true with, and this is especially true with retirees, people who are, um, you know, in their 60s and 70s, they want to go to, to the warmer climates. And so they move to the south. That's why popular uh, Florida has been so popular. Um, this is also true for now you look at it at it from an economic perspective where are the jobs well Texas has been a leader in job growth and job creation and businesses and people are moving there at, by, in the in droves and they have been for over 10 years a lot of companies have moved out of places like California like Toyota for example and moved to, to Texas so that's why you're seeing uh, the Texas markets particularly Dallas and Houston and San Antonio growing so fast so there's a lot of job growth. There's a lot of population growth. Um, that's all great stuff. But the problem is it cr that it creates is after a certain number of years, you see property values appreciate so much that what used to be affordable is now less affordable. And over time, it'll become um, almost unaffordable. <laughs> so, but, but the South, um, to answer your question, the South, um, uh, uh, states like Texas, the low tax, no tax state, 
you know, Florida, Texas, like when you look at, you know, people vote with their feet, they vote with their wallet, they don't necessarily vote at the ballot box. And so when you have environment, environments that are friendly to you personally in taxes and to businesses in terms of, you know, the business climate, guess what? People move. So those are the states to focus on. And, and you know what? I will agree with you in Florida because obviously I live here in South Florida, but I, I will say that I've been here, believe it or not, for more than 20 years. And wow. so I can actually witness and I can talk about it that it's been a drastic change here, especially in the last, I would say, probably eight to 10 years, right after the bubble burst, right? Um, and, you know, obviously, Florida was one of the, the most, you know, I would say, probably distressed, you know, states. Um, and I mean, I saw properties drop drastically in price. And now it seems like we, you know, we're just in that peak of going up again. Now, uh, even though inventory is shrinking, uh, so do, you know, do I see it from my perspective that, you know, Florida still think it's a phenomenal state to invest, uh, but you need to be careful because, uh, again, the Tri-County, anything from, I believe, Fort Lauderdale to, you know, uh, Miami or even Palm Beach, it's almost untouchable. I mean, because the property right. increased so much that I think we're in a small bubble. I don't know if it's going to burst, uh, but definitely uh, inventory is shrinking. There's no doubt about that. So what would you offer as a tip for someone, especially if they're starting new in the real estate and they really want to get into investing, but, you know, besides hiring someone like you who could hopefully help them, you know, guide them in the right direction and coaching and also investing in, in the right properties, right? And you said residential is definitely uh, something that you see a lot of growth with duplex and triplex, right? Uh, how and what would you offer them as tips and what to watch out when it comes to investing? Because like you said, you made a mistake when you were so young um, and we learn as we go in life, trial and error, right? Uh, but it's nothing better than have a mentor to help you in the process. What, so what would you offer someone who's just listening to this and say, you know, I always wonder if I could get into real estate. Is it too late? Um, is, it, is there you know, a good opportunity? Uh, what would you offer in those kind of tips, Margaret, please? <clears throat> we could do an entire episode on that question alone. Just <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. So here's here's a few few suggestions or tips, if you want to call them that. So first of all, you want to a lot of people make the mistake of focusing on a property. They see a property, it it, it looks good, it has good curb appeal, and on paper the numbers look great. And they make their decision based on the fact that, oh, it's leased, it's got cash flow, um, and the numbers look great on paper, uh, and, and the property's in good condition. Maybe it's, it hasn't been completely renovated, but, but that's where it ends. And so that's a mistake, and I'll tell you why. You need to step back and look at the forest, not just the trees. Because that property, I can show you properties like that, and it could be on a street that's surrounded by dilapidated properties in the essentially a no neighborhood and I, I i don't mean to pick on the city of detroit but i've been there i've invested in detroit i know the market fairly well from years past and i can show you properties that look great and on paper and look great in person but they're in neighborhoods where you're going to have a lot of tenant issues a lot of turnover you're going to have headaches and there's not a lot of growth going on so you need to start with the market i call it a top-down approach start with the market first you want to make sure that there's there's strong fundamentals and good economics. Then you work your way down to the to the neighborhoods or sub markets. Then you start looking at specific properties, and and that's what you need to do: a top down, not bottom up, or just looking at the property only. Uh, second tip I'll I'll throw out there is try to stick to markets that have that growth growth potential, uh, strong job you know st strong job market. Uh, a diverse economy. It's not just about oil and gas. It's got a diversity of jobs from healthcare to finance to tourism to whatever it may be. Thirdly, something I call the rent to value ratio or RV ratio, and that's the ratio of price to rent. So if you have a hundred thousand dollar house and it rents for a thousand dollars a month, that's one percent. You divide the rent into the price, purchase price. So you want to target about 1%. 0 0.9 is okay, 0 0.8 is even okay, but below that you, you can look elsewhere and find better opportunity. 
So you want to be around 1% plus or minus. That, that's an ideal. We were talking about coastal markets before. If you look at Southern California or you know, Miami or many of these coastal markets, you're going to find that on average, the properties there are going to rent for about 0.5 or 0.4%. Okay. It's not enough. You know, first of all, you're not going to find a hundred thousand dollar property, which is, you know, do we, we have a lot of three bedroom, two bath homes that are in the hundred to $150,000 price range. You can't even get a garage in Southern California for that much, you know? So this is how much of a disparity there is in price, <laughs> but, uh, but you want to shoot for about 1% plus or minus. That's just a rule of thumb. Uh, but the caution there is that you want to stick to ideally, you know, B, B plus, A minus type neighborhoods. You want to be in the B's and A's. You don't want to go down to C and D class neighborhoods because, again, that's where the problems are. And the numbers are going to look great on paper. And this is where people make a mistake. They look at properties that are in low income, um, sketch neighborhoods, and the numbers look phenomenal on paper. But probably high turnover, a lot of transition, damage when the, you know when they leave, um, and the turnover is very expensive. When you have a turnover, that's where you lose a lot of your cash flow. Your annual cash flow can be blown out the window by one turn of a, a tenant. That is so true. That is a very very good point that you brought up and, and a wonderful tip. And I think one of the things also that uh, you know, I, I learned from my own experiences that if you're really investing because, like you say, you want to hold and wait until, you know, uh, appreciation uh, of, of the property is uh, don't buy into a condo. <laughs> you know, right. buy yourself a house because you're going to have, uh, you can set your own rules instead of dealing with an association. And the same thing goes for single homes that are part of community of a HOA. Be very careful with that, too. Yeah, the nice thing about condos is that you have someone taking care of the exterior maintenance. You don't have to worry about the upkeep outside the property. The, the negative thing about condos is twofold. Number one, a lot of condos have rules and restrictions uh, limiting or, or banning uh, rentals. rentals. Number two is you have no control over the HOA. They can add rules and change rules, and they're usually expensive, especially places like California. So it really puts a huge dent in your cash flow. Uh, it's not uncommon to own a condo here in Southern California with condo fees that start on the low end in the $400 range and literally go up into the thousands. Wow. So that will eliminate your cash flow for sure. Yeah, and the condos here also, by the way, in sharing with the rest of the audience, they're also ranging about a good three, three to four hundred dollars minimum. I mean, that's how how wow. this is insurance. I mean, obviously, being the hurricane state, as we were talking earlier, you know, uh, before the recording, uh, you know, insurance here is just outrageous. I mean, even for a condo, uh, you know, you want to have some asset protection, right? And I always recommend to have some sort of insurance. I mean, you wouldn't drive your car without insurance. Uh, so why would you live in a property without it? And, and I always say that to people, especially if you have a free and clear title. I mean, you, you don't want right. to take that chance um, with or without it. I mean, it doesn't matter, but it's just a protection. So I think that, you know, and, and from my perspective, um, like I said, condos, like you said, yeah, it's great to have, you know, uh, a, a, a good, you know, um, uh, coverage, you know, when it comes to the association taking care of everything else outside the exterior of the building and amenities. But the problem is that, I guess, you don't have control. And there's so many restrictions that if I, wish I should start all over again, I tell any, any investors, especially if you're planning to rent, buy yourself a house. A single family house is way much better. It's a much greater investment and you can control whatever you want to do with that property. When you have a single family home, your tenant feels like they have pride of ownership, even though they don't own the property. There's pride of ownership. They, they have privacy because they have four unshared walls. Uh, they are often better quality, anecdotally speaking, better quality tenants. They take care of the property. They have res more respect, especially if you're in B and A class neighborhoods. Uh, single family homes are easy to understand. They're easy to repair. They're the most liquid form of real estate because you can sell a single family home to, to a, not just investors, but you can sell them to, to homeowners. That's right. So it's a very easy to invest in asset type within the asset class of real estate. 
Yeah. yeah. That's why, and like I said, I learned from my mistake too. <laughs> so I, I, I say that, you know, my next investment, I still own a condo, but my next investment definitely will have to be house because I just feel it's, it's more liquid. And only that, I mean, like I said, it's, you can get to, uh, as people know, I do tax advisory, especially for the real estate and e-commerce industry. Those are my niches, but I think it's really important. I mean, from my perspective and from Marco to, you know, single family homes, I love duplex. I think the multifamily are phenomenal. Uh, in triplex even better right um, so and it's good to know that you have good listings and good connections in certain states uh, you know for that and Marco um, anything else that you want to leave us with any other extra tips and how can um, you know they can reach out to you and that way hopefully you can help them out please yeah, like uh, my last of many tips would probably be take the time to educate yourself. You know, you the best investment you can make is in yourself. And the more you put between your ears good information, you know, from the books, and there's literally hundreds if not thousands of great books out there, um, podcasts, you know, like listening to Liz and, you know, the, the people that you talk to. And you. Um, you have we just put out a lot podcasts. of good podcasts. Well, thank you. Yeah. So even passive real estate investing podcast is, is, is a good resource because we talk about these things. Um, but educate yourself is, is, is really my first rule of all my rules of successful investing is, is expensive. Ignorance is expensive. What you don't know is costing you money. Is co it's, you're losing opportunity and it's costing you money. So educate yourself. And so that is the, probably the biggest tip I could give your listeners. And then you know, once you get to the point where you believe you're ready to move to the next step, take action. Because if you don't take action, you're going to be in the same place you are today, tomorrow, the next day, and next year. So take action. Take action. That's right. So educate yourself, take action. And like I said, connect with people like Marco that understands the industry, who's been doing it for a long time. So for all my audience out there, thank you for watching and listening and liking and subscribing. And Marco, it's been a great pleasure to have you. And, 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 and I know you have a very busy schedule and I do appreciate you taking the time to be uh, in the show. And, and I hope that people just listen and, and pay attention because sometimes we can avoid some of those headaches. And the reality is that some of those headaches can cost you thousands of dollars in mistakes. So if you can avoid it, by all means, reach out to people who are experts and they, they've been through it. So they know how to guide you in the right direction. So Marco, thank uh, you again. What I'm is your uh, website, your phone number? And oh. you can reach out, please, Marco. <clears throat> right. So there's two places you could reach my team and I, and that is our main website is noradarealestate.com, N-O-R-A-D-A, -A, noradarealestate.com. That is where we have all our properties and free information. And then our podcast's home is PassiveRealEstateInvesting.com, PassiveRealEstateInvesting.com. That's it. And one last thing, you're an author, so what about your books? Uh, do you have those available that way in case someone wants to go ahead and purchase those? Yeah, so there's one book out there on, on Amazon. It was a, a number one bestseller in 15 categories. It's called The One Thing That Changed Everything. Um, so it's actually a whole bunch of associates and friends of mine that we all came together. We all contributed one chapter to this book. So it's the one thing that changed everything. And then uh, I have a book coming out. I have the ebook the e version, like the short version on the website. It's a free download called The Ultimate Guide to Passive Real Estate Investing. So that's a free download on the website. But that is being has been turned into a book called Passive Real Estate Investing, which is not released yet. It's, it's, it's in its final manuscript. It'll be out this year. But, um, but you can keep an eye on that. And I'll be giving that book away for free. So um, people can find that on our website. Actually, if they just subscribe to the newsletter on our website, they'll get an email when it's available. Thank you. Thank That's you. It. Marco. That's fantastic. So, hey, folks, you have plenty of information coming from Marco. So, subscribe to his newsletter. And, like I said, follow him through the podcast because I heard some of his episodes and they were just amazing. And again, it's all about educating ourselves. There's no excuse for ignorance, and that's true. Um, there's plenty <laughs> of free information out there that we're providing. It's to help people really, not, again, to avoid mistakes if you can. So thank you, Marco. Uh, and again, thank I wish you a lot of success to you and to all my subscribers. Like and share. And I will see you next episode. Take care, everyone.